Are you looking to go solar, but you're unsure which panels to have, which company to go with, and how much it might cost? Watch this video and I'll help you through it. Hi, my name is Jack and welcome to my channel, Solar Pros, where we cover all things solar. For a while now, I've worked in solar design as well as solar installs, so I've been able to garner a wide experience in the industry. If you're at a place where you're looking to go solar, but you're unsure of where to start, you've come to the right place. As with all big investments, it's important to do research into all the different components of your investment so that you know that your money's going to the right place. But with solar, that can be difficult with all the different components that are involved. In this video, I'll break a solar investment down into five main components. The type of panels you buy, the type of inverter you buy, battery backup, the company that you choose to work with, and the financing options that you're offered. It's first important to note that all homes and structures are not compatible for solar. Solar panels require sunlight to produce direct current electricity so if your home does happen to have a lot of shade, solar installers might be turning you away. A neat tool that I recommend using to see whether or not your roof would be a good fit for solar is Google Project Sunroof. This software allows you to plug in your address and then, using satellite imagery, see which areas of your roof actually get the most amount of sunlight hours throughout the year. In most cases, this problem can be avoided with alternative panel placements or tree trimming, but it's important to note. In a standard solar install, there will be three main components that you'll be primarily investing into. The solar panels, the inverters, and possibly battery backup. Let's go over each one. When you're looking into the type of solar panels to use, it's important that your solar consultant understands the strengths of each panels and which would be suited for your project. Certain panels fare better in certain weather conditions and environments, which is why that is important to note. When evaluating which panel to use for investment, I recommend using this criteria. First, you must evaluate the performance and the efficiency of that panel. After that, you must evaluate the warranties offered by that panel manufacturer. And finally, you must look at the price and availability of that panel. I will be making a future video breaking down all of the popular panels today, so make sure that you subscribe for when that comes out. For example, if I was speaking to a homeowner in Phoenix, Arizona, I would likely recommend the REC Alpha Pure Black 400 watt panel due to the low temperature coefficient that it offers, meaning that the panel operates at a high efficiency under extreme heat. Whereas on the other hand, if I was speaking to a homeowner in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I might recommend the Aptos DNA 440 watt panel due to its strength under severe weather conditions such as hail, which that area sees a lot of. I wanted to note this because it's important to realize that each home will have a system which serves itself best which is why it would be wrong for me to say that one panel is better than another. Now, let's transition into the next component of your investment, which will be the inverter. Sometimes overlooked, the inverter is oftentimes referred to as the most critical part of your solar system. In essence, it's the inverter's job to turn the direct current electricity that the solar panels produce into alternating current, which is the type of power that your home will be able to use. In today's market, there are three main types of inverter systems that are commonly sold. You have the traditional string inverter system, you have the microinverter system, and you have the string inverter system combined with the power optimizers. Let's go over each of them. A photovoltaic system consists of PV panels which produce direct current power when exposed to sunlight, and an inverter which converts the DC power into AC power that is fed into the utility grid. Three different inverter topologies are currently used in PV systems. A traditional string inverter system, a microinverter system, and the power optimizer system. The traditional string inverter topology, which is still used in installations, has a significant drawbacks. In traditional systems, panels are wired in a series of string. Since each panel has a unique power production profile, which is a function of differences in manufacturing variances, installation parameters, and shading patterns, the entire system's output is limited. The traditional system design requires all strings to be in the same length using the same type of panels to be positioned at the same angle at the same angle towards the sun. Real life installation constraints result in either wasted roof space or unnecessary duplication of the system components. The DC cables which connect the panels to a string carry high voltage as long as the sun is shining. The traditional inverter cannot shut down the panels. DC voltage therefore poses a serious risk to installers and firefighters. A traditional system cannot track power output, temperature, or any other parameters of a single panel. This makes it impossible to identify specific panel level problems remotely. 
In the 90s, another inverter topology was introduced, the microinverter. This topology takes the functionality of the traditional string inverter and scales it down to fit a single panel. By controlling each panel, individual microinverters are able to solve certain challenges of the traditional system. However, microinverters have their own inherent drawbacks. This topology requires each panel to have its own microinverter with fully inverter functionality. Therefore, it has a significant higher upfront cost relative to traditional inverter technology. Finally, we have the last and most commonly installed inverter system, the DC optimized inverter topology. The power optimizer topology combines the traditional inverter functionality into two products, the power optimizer and the simplified inverter. The power optimizers are located on each panel, turning the panels into intelligent panels. These power optimizers provide panel level tracking and real-time adjustments of current voltage to the optimal working point of each individual panel. The simplified inverter is installed similarly to the traditional inverter, but it is only responsible for DC to AC inversion and grid connection. Here is a helpful comparison graph that I've made so you can take a look at the three options and figure out which one you would like to have. After you've chosen which inverter system to go with, it is time to look into battery backup. After being in the industry for a while, it would be my guess that between 10 and 20% of systems will have some sort of battery backup combined with it. Battery backup can be great in the event of a power outage, but with a premium cost, let's break down whether or not it would be worth it for you. Battery backup technology has become increasingly popular in the past decade, with companies such as Generac and Tesla leading the pack. Batteries are nice to have, yet the price that they can come in at turns a large majority of people away. And when you think about it, if the average home in America loses power for a little under two hours each year, the investment to some might not make sense. If you live in an area that is much more prone to blackouts, or you're in a situation where you acquire electricity due to a health condition, then in that case, I would certainly recommend looking into a battery. Solar batteries can come in all shapes and sizes and can weigh up to 215 pounds. One of the decisions that you'll make when purchasing a battery is whether or not you want an AC or a DC coupled battery. Like we covered earlier, solar panels produce direct current electricity and batteries store energy as direct current electricity. So it makes sense that the rest of the battery storage system works on direct current. In an AC coupled system, the direct current electricity from the panels is converted to alternating current and then back to direct current when stored in the battery and then back again to AC for home use. This will cause unnecessary energy losses. With a DC coupled system, there is no need for this extra conversion. So the energy is only converted once, making the process a lot more energy efficient. After you've worked with the solar consultant to design a system that best fits your needs, it's time to figure out which company you would like to install that system. Looking at which company to go with can be intimidating and I would likely judge them on these stipulations. Number one, will they be around long enough to service the warranties that you have been given? Number two, do they have a solid reputation and customer history? And number three, can they provide the equipment that you're looking for in a timely manner? Finally, it is time to go over the different purchasing options that you have when going solar. There are two main ways that solar is purchased, either with a loan or with cash. From my experience, I would estimate that between 75 to 85% of people do choose to finance solar due to the low interest rates in this industry. You see, solar is a pretty safe loan for the banks to offer, considering that for the most part, when people switch to solar, their monthly solar payment comes in under what they were previously paying to the utility company, making it a pretty safe loan for the banks to offer. From my experience, what I've seen is that most programs will offer a zero down program where the customer will have their first solar payment due typically anywhere from 60 to 90 days after the solar system is installed on their roof. In the event that you choose to not finance solar and purchase it cash, in most cases, you will have a small down payment due on the initial date that you sign up, and then you will have the remaining amount due 30 days before and 30 days after that system is installed on your roof. Again, it is very important that you speak to your solar consultant regarding what you're looking for and which options that you're offered so that you know you're making the right decision when you're choosing to purchase solar. If you're at a place right now where you're looking to see whether or not solar makes sense for your home and which options that you're offered, you can speak to me or a member of my team by booking a call in the link below this video.
Again, if you learned something from this video, I'd appreciate it if you could give it a like or subscribe. Uh, my goal at the end of the day is just to educate as much people as possible so that they know they're making the right decision when they're going solar and they have no regrets throughout the process. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.